Hi, and welcome to another episode of the Digital Painter Vidcast. My name is Terry Danich Kimak II, and I am the Digital Painter. This video is going to continue our Corel Painter series. I'm running Corel Painter 2016, but if you're running 2015 or X3, you're probably still good to go. Uh, behind me, you see one of my paintings. This is one of my sketch a day paintings or painting a day paintings that I've been working on over the past couple of weeks. I like to change up that background every once in a while. I think it's fun, but uh, it's a pot. It's a pot. That's all I got for you. All right. So if you're watching this on YouTube and you've seen me before, I say hit that subscribe button. Make me a happy camper. If you are watching this on my website, uh, thedigitalpainter.com, what you want to do is join, become an artist member for free, enjoy some of the perks, and if you think uh, you know, if you think I'm worth it, go ahead and join the uh, pa uh, patron or platinum patron memberships. Both of those are awesome, and they help support me as I continue to make videos and. Uh, at times look like a complete goofball here. So what are we going to be talking about today is, uh, we're, like I said, we're continuing our Corel Painter 2016 series. Now, the last video in this series, I was starting to get into some of the brush settings. And there are a lot of brush settings. So as we continue through, I decided, you know, I'm not going to go through every single setting. There are things that you, the user, may want to explore. Or if there's something that you want me to kind of uh, look at or talk about, you can always leave it in a comment. I'm just going to kind of go through some things that are interesting to me or things that I use from time to time. And again, I'm still fairly new at Corel Painter. I mean, I've had it for over a year, but it's not been one of my main programs. And um, so what I've been trying to do is give myself time with all my programs a little more often rather than just sticking to one because I like to get better in all areas because what I find is that the students I teach both at the digitalpainter.com as well as the students I teach at the college I teach at I said teach how many times there? They, uh, different ones have uh, the ability to purchase different programs. So the more I know about all of these programs, the better I am to relay information to you. All right, so let me click this button here. Do do do, I've gotten small. I've gone tiny. Do you see that? Anyways, here I am sitting in your computer talking to you. So, as I was saying, over here, we started to talk a little bit about the brush settings. We, you know, we talked about stroke preview, dab preview, all that other good stuff. And you can see there are a whole ton of other things to look at. And if I sat here and did that, I mean, that's like 10 videos right there. And they would be not really interesting videos. Except, you know, sometimes I can kind of be funny. So let's just look at some of the ones that are more interesting. We're going to start with opacity. Now... A lot of programs allow you to adjust your opacity, for example, oops, for example up here, see opacity 70%, opacity 70%, if I come here and click it and take it down, notice 52%, 52%, this is one of those things I'm like, I don't really need to talk to you about this, look, it happens, right? The interesting thing is the one underneath that, which is minimum opacity, and let me grab something where we can kind of, maybe oils, I don't know. Let's see. Let me see what this looks like on the canvas. Whoa, let me turn off that. Bring up my size a little bit. Okay, so if you look, I can go really light. I do actually have my pen down. Oh, that was weird. Let's try again. Really? Oh, I hope my... My tablet isn't dying on me because I should be drawing something right there. All right, then we're going to switch. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, this will be great. Let me grab a crayon instead. Maybe a chunky oil pastel. There we go. Increase the size. So we can see that my opacity right here is 50%, right? So if I start, I'm at zero. And as I press harder, and we'll get up to 50%. And you can tell that if I come back. Well, maybe you can't. <laughs> but you can see here we're going from light to dark. If I were to change my minimum opacity, say up to 54%, see how much quicker it changed? And that was with the same 
pressure. There's a more gradual because my minimum opacity now is no longer zero. What is minimum opacity? Well, it's the least amount of opacity that you can have in what you're doing. Opacity being, you know, um, your translucency. I like that translucency. Let me grab. What's this one? This one's. Oh, you know what? What about an airbrush? Dude, airbrushes are cool. I just want like a regular. Uh, let's let's try this one. There we go. Light to five percent, because that's what the opacity is. If I take it and take the opacity up, let's go to hundred. So this is now light to a hundred percent. Notice the difference in darkness. That was at five percent. We'll take that puppy back down to 5%, 6%. So again, this is the dark. This is me pressing as dark as I can. But if I switch that up to 100, notice the difference. See how much darker it is? All right. Let me grab a new layer. So do we understand opacity? I hope we understand opacity. You know, it's the translucency of the paint as it goes down. Now, because now if you were working, say for example, in Photoshop, it would react a little different. But because this is trying to Im uh, imitate natural media, there are depending on the tool that you've chosen, it might be adjusted funkily. Funkily, I'm not going to talk about opacity, jitter, smoothness. You know, you want to look at those, play with them. I'm not going to talk about grain or stroke attributes. Size here is up here. You can adjust the size. The size equals size. Okay, so right now we're at 50, and I could, you know, increase or decrease. Your minimum size right now is 53%. So if I were to take that to zero, right? Okay, so there it is at zero. If I bring that back up to 53%, essentially what it's saying is 53% of 50, right? So now notice I can't go any. I can't get that little line anymore. Okay, so your minimum size is essentially the smallest that it can go percentage-wise based on the size of your brush. So if I were to take my brush up to, say, 150 now, I can't even get it to go that small. So that's the smallest it'll go. This is the lightest. I can't get it to go any smaller. It was smaller here, but that was 50% of 50. This is or 53% of 50. This is 53% of 150, okay? So what that allows you to do is it allows you to adjust very specifically how you want your size to act or react. So again, this, you know, because it's an airbrush, there would not be the little tendril that you have there, generally speaking, okay? Size, jitter, and smoothness, again, things you can play with. Expressions are always fun, but we will look at those later. Um, yeah, we'll talk about that another time. I don't want to get into that right now. Angle. Now, this is important. So if you notice right now, my circle there, I don't have an angle. It's just, it's a blob. But if I were to take my squeeze down, and if you hover, you can see. Let me see if I can get a good hover there. There you go. If you flat, you know, Flatten a brush of circular dynamic speckles or capture dab tight. So now notice how my brush line, it's because it's not squeezed. If I take my squeeze back up to 100, and now it's circular, okay? So that's something to be aware of. If I take it midway, it's partially squeezed. Now the good thing with midway, I'm going to add me another layer here. Oops. So this is squeeze with an angle of zero, but what if I were to take my angle up to say 90? Now, and then if we take it up to 135, you see that? So when your squeeze is not at 100, you can adjust the angle that way. We could even adjust the angle jitter. Again, if you hover, it varies the angle of the brush stroke. So we're going to go 100% jitter, right? Oh. Well, maybe not. 
<laughs> it says it will vary the angle of a brush stroke. And maybe I just don't have the right brush for it to do it with, which is, you know, again, some of these, when you're playing with them, you'll notice. We can adjust the smoothness a little bit. That some of the settings work better with certain types of brushes. So just be aware of that. Some brushes work great, some don't. So that's what the angle jitter does. The great thing is if you hover over any of these, you'll see that it'll give you a little information. I really like smoothness. I'm going to take smoothness up to 100. And then if I were to take it down to 0, Notice how much smoother my first one is. And that's not just how I move my hand. So smoothness, as it says here, it'll smooth the angle variation in a brush stroke for a more organic look, which is nice. Okay. So we've just quickly looked over, you know, oh, I wanted to look at spacing. Oh, spacing is how far each stamp happens. So if I were to grab something, say, I don't know, let's grab not pattern pens, though that would be funny. Let's grab Sumi. Let's grab a dry ink Sumi. Let's see what that looks like. Okay, if I add my spacing. Now each stamp is happening at a distance of 178%. If I come back down, each stamp is happening close. Let's see if I can get a kind of a mid so it looks like there's less paint, but what's really happening is that the stamps are happening at intervals rather than right on top of each other. Okay, what do I mean by stamps? Well, stamps, think of it this way. Think that each time I press down, and let me, let me make my brush big for this. Each time I press down, there's a stamp. See that there? And then if I press down again, there's another stamp. And another, and another, and another. Now you notice, as I'm moving forward, those stamps happen at a certain variable. Well, if I take my spacing down, that variable is closer. So it's happening much more often. Now it's not visible to the naked eye here, but it's happening much closer together. And that's what your spacing is. So this is 20%. So if we take ours all the way up to 200%, there's one, there's two, three, four. Can you see that distance is much farther? And you can adjust the minimum spacing as well. And of course, boost, which optimizes the performance of brushes that use a camel hair. Well, I'm not using one with camel hair or flat dab type, okay? And then finally, you have your dab profile. We looked at this a little bit. Let me grab a new layer. So right now, if I were to grab, say, let's grab a paintbrush. <coughs> Excuse me. Oh, that profile isn't going to work for that one. See, and this, some settings aren't on all of them. So I'm going to jump back to Sumi because it was working for the Sumi one. Okay. So let me take my spacing back down. So here, take my size down. See the rounded edge? And I can't get it to happen now. And this is going to drive me crazy. There we go. Okay, so this is a different profile. See it here? Oh, pressed a little too hard. Or we could do this one. And you can see how it's changing up here in our stroke preview as well. So if I click different ones, you can see there are different looks. Okay, so that's what your dab profile is. OK. 
Okay. So look at our, see how this has a little bit of a round? If I grab the flat, I can't replicate with the flat because I'm bad. You can see this one, see the space. And again, if we go over to the stroke preview and you'll see it change with each of them. Okay. The, these are little things, right? And that's, I think that's the power that you get in Corel Painter. It's those little changes, those little adjustments where you can make that perfect brush. Okay. So we talked, like I said, opacity. Uh, we just ran through six of these fairly quickly because I just wanted to kind of show you that there are all of these different different types of things we can play with, different settings. And, you know, we haven't even gotten into things like the particles or uh, down here, the, all that's particles. We got speckle. We have watercolor, you know. Let me close up some of these. You double click to close these, just so you know. Here's what, look at, if I were to grab a real watercolor brush. I mean, look at all of these settings. You've got your brush, water, flow, pigment, paper, wind. You literally can make the perfect watercolor brush or perfect for you, okay? So don't hesitate to kind of test out these different settings. I do love watercolor. I'm a huge fan of watercolor. This is like a tree. All right. Well, that's going to be it for this week. Um, uh, you know, as we're looking through this, what I'm probably going to do is kind of let you explore the rest of those settings. And if you have any questions on those settings, why don't you send me an email? You can contact me at terry.jakimiak at thedigitalpainter.com or just head over to thedigitalpainter.com. Or if you're watching this on YouTube, just leave me a message in the comments. And if there's, you know, if there's a setting you want me to mess around with or that you don't fully understand, ask me. If I don't know, I can find out. It's one of the good things I'm, or one of the things I'm really good at is research. I can find things out. All right. Thank you guys so much for your time. I hope you're enjoying these videos. Again, my name is Terry Dana Jakimiak II. I am the digital painter, and uh, I hope you, you continue enjoying digital art. Take care.